First of all, Dave Fadoy is one of my favorite people. And he also is a favorite voice to many of us. I mean, the voice is everywhere. Dave, you know that you were my mentor in the voice business. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a wonderful mentor, and you were a fabulous student. <laughs> <laughs> now, remember how we used to be at our agency, and we would come in, everybody would be sitting around in the room, getting ready to audition, and I would just be so enthralled with you. You have done Aww. such an incredible job with voice. Well, thank you. How did it all start for you? Well, I had been a, uh, well, it started because my mother made sure that I could read and speak well. Uh, but moving many, 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 many years further, uh, I had been a disc jockey in the San Francisco Bay Area at a radio station, KSOL. I did mornings there, working under the name Billy David Ocean. And while I was uh, in uh, San Francisco, I discovered this thing called voiceover work. When another buddy of mine... Uh, was, was leaving. Hey, where you going? Well, I'm going to do some voiceover work. You know, I make more money at that than I do on the radio. And kind of a, a, a light bulb went off. And I didn't do anything about it for a couple of years, but it was an itch that I finally had to scratch. And in 1990, I moved to L.A. Uh, I had taken a, a class up north. Take class, take class. Take class. Schooling, education. Got to. I had taken a class um, with Lee Gilbert, who had been an agent at Sutton Barthafanari Agency uh, here in Los Angeles. And after the class, she said, you know, you're very talented. If you'd ever like to uh, be represented by SBV and come to L.A., we'd love to have you. And, uh, of course, I was morning man on the number one music station in town, so I said, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> and a few months later, the station fired the whole staff, including yours truly, and I got on the phone, uh, were, were you serious? Can I really? <laughs> and uh, she said, come on down. So uh, I put together a new demo, and uh, a couple months later, I was commuting back and forth between uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Wow. Isn't that interesting how life happens. I mean, because I know there's somebody listening right now who probably just lost their job. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. You might be on the beginning of a new career. Well, maybe. Uh, a lot of people who have wonderful voice, they, I have a wonderful deep voice. Mm -hmm. I've been told I should do voiceover work. And that's wonderful. It's great that you have a great voice, but you really have to have acting ability. Mm -hmm. You really need to be able to, what I do, uh, what I say, uh, take the words off the page. Well, you know, I, I tell people, I say, first of all, you've got, like you said, you've got to take a workshop. It's beyond just having a great voice. Like you say, it's acting. I always say, McDonald's has never sold a hamburger. McDonald's sells happiness. <laughs> yes. So when you get that copy, they want to hear that smile in your voice. Mm, that deliciousness. That's right. And insurance, you're Even selling... though their food isn't really food. Right. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. Or you have like an insurance commercial. You're selling assurance. So you have to bring all of that in. There. You have taken voice to a whole nother level. And you are in something that I find so fascinating. I call it gaming, but I understand it's changed its name even. Well, you know, I still call it uh, video games. But uh, as the industry is growing, uh, the term that is coming into vogue is interactive entertainment. Because it is. And... Few people know uh, how big the gaming industry is. It's a worldwide industry. It's bigger than music and movies combined. Really? Never been a movie that made a billion dollars in a day. In the last 12 months, we had three or four games that did. What? Yes. In a day? In a day. Um, just had a big release yesterday. Well, we're doing this later. But just had a recent big release, uh, Batman Arkham Knights. Uh, I'm not sure how well it'll do, but it will be in the hundreds of millions, and I happen to have a part of it. And game. what part are you in the Batman? Um, well, uh, I'm not supposed to talk too much about it, but I play no the part of Lucius Fox. Uh, and if you've watched the recent Batman movies, it's the Morgan Freeman part. Okay. So. All right. But you, you I mean, just listen to your reel, and we're going to listen to Dave's reel in just a second. But just name all of the characters that you play. The gamers are going to go nuts. I have been in more than 100 games. I cannot name all the characters uh, that I... But uh, probably the one most people know me for is Lee Everett from The Walking Dead game. Uh, the game won uh, about 100 Game of the Year awards. I was nominated uh, five times as best performance in a video game. Uh, even a BAFTA, British Academy of mm -hmm. Film and Television Arts, got to go to London for the ceremony. <laughs> Didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. But uh, I understand when the actors say, uh, who've been nominated for an Oscar, it is an honor 
just to be nominated. It really is. But I did win uh, a Machinima Award and a, a Dice Award. So um, uh, two out of five, I'll Ain't take bad. it. I'll take well, let's it. take a listen to Dave Fanoy's voice reel and see if you recognize any of these voices. That's absolutely amazing, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> No. Tell me, why do you think games are so big? Well, it's uh, it's another form of entertainment. It, As the world has become uh, more technological, it just fits right in with the direction that the human race is going in. And, uh, and really, uh, one of the things I think is that interactive entertainment is a revolution in entertainment. Most people don't think about this very much, but from the time that the first caveman uh, told stories around the campfire or the African griots told fables and, 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 and uh, tales of, of uh, creation and Shakespeare and Menander and whatever playwrights from way back to now to television to movies, it's always been an audience sat down, watched a performance, took it in, clapped or booed, uh, and then went on their way. Finally, we are involved in the storytelling. Uh, if you're a gamer who plays The Last of Us, uh, The Walking Dead game, any number of games, you have a part in how the story goes. You become part of the storytelling. That's never happened mm. before in human evolution of entertainment. So uh, it's it's you and it's not going away. The average age of a gamer is in their 30s now. Really, the average time they've been playing is 15 plus years, between 15 and 20 years. Uh, sex, uh, yes, please. There is no sex now because you're yeah. gaming all the time, right? Wow. Well, <laughs> but uh, uh, Harry, males and females, men still outnumber women, but only by a little bit. Uh, it's, it's about 52 percent of 40. There are a lot of women gamers. A lot of women gamers. I was at E3. Uh, the big convention here for uh, interactive entertainment, electronic entertainment. And one of the things I noticed, because I've been there the last few years, was the number of women, many more women uh, at E3 this year than I've ever seen. I wonder why. Well, there are more and more women gaming. There are more and more women getting into the gaming business. Uh, I had a chance to go to uh, Malmo, Sweden for a gaming conference where uh, they asked me to speak. <laughs> Fools that they were. <laughs> um, and uh, one, the whole thing was done in English, which was amazing because it was Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and Germany. Um, but lots and lots of women creating games in the gaming business uh, as game producers and writing stories uh, because they're now just as interested in gaming as uh, young men are. And is there any competition? Can you win money and prizes gaming? As a matter of fact, uh, there are professional gamers now. I've got a buddy of mine, English guy, happens to be black, um, Ryan Hart, who's a world champion gamer. He plays like Mortal Kombat and wins thousands and thousands of dollars. I had a chance to go with him to a, a uh, 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 competition here in Los Angeles, and he happened not to win that one. I guess I was bad luck. <laughs> but the 17-year-old young man who did walked away with a check for $10,000. What? You have other games like uh, Dota 2. I play six characters in, no, that's six. Six <laughs> characters in Dota 2. Um, they have competitions where the winning team uh, wins upwards of a million dollars. Wow. And they take place at in huge... Uh, convention centers in a huge room with a, a movie size screen, uh, teams of five on either side, and in between them, uh, you've got play by play and color announcers, and it sounds most like Monday Night Football. Oh, look, and Bat Rider, oh, he took him out of who's gonna win? I don't know if he can recover from this one, Bob. That's what it sounds like, mm -hmm. and um, it's interesting, but uh, South Koreans. Are, uh, tend to be the best players on these teams. And you, there are even some stories now of South Korean kids dying because they won't get away from the computer. Oh, see, now they want to be so good. Let me ask you about that because there's some people who say that, you know, the, the gaming can go too far, that you can really mess up your education or you may not ever come out the house. Or Well, you know, anything can go too far. 
Uh, I, I think for most people, it's not a problem. For some people, it is a problem. And actually, the gaming industry is addressing that, like Telltale Games, uh, who did the Walking Dead game. It was specifically set up in five episodes per season that you can play in two-hour chunks. So you can keep your job and your relationship. <laughs> and still have a, You know, I have never... I think... I did one of the first games when they first came out, and a six-year-old whooped my butt. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have never done it. And, but I, what, for what I've seen, the games have changed tremendously. I know in the voiceover work, it's not like all the screaming and yelling. Now there's actually plot line. Oh, yeah. And uh, they've really evolved. I mean, I, 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 maybe I need to start with a game. What game would I start with if I'm, if I'm trying to try well, something new? You know, not to scratch my own back. Oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Walking Dead game is a great because it's it's not dependent upon your skill level. Okay. Uh, it's really more about making choices. What kind of choice would this human being? Would I save this person or would I save that person? Wow. Who would I feed? Would I feed that person or would I feed that person? Mm. And okay. uh, people tell me all the time uh, that this was the first game where they felt connected to the characters and that in the final scene in season one, uh, the goodbye between myself and the little girl that I'm protecting or my the character, that they cried. And this is grown men crying like little babies. Man, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so the cartoon or the animation is crying. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating. I, you know, we're always on the show talking about try something new, trying something new. And I think I'm gonna have to start gaming, I'm, or at least Try. I well, I, I, I should say that I am teaching uh, workshops on voiceover for video games now. I was just in Atlanta and uh, did a two-day workshop. I just did one here in Los Angeles. I'll be going to Orlando and Chicago and Dallas. Uh, we're going to hit D.C. And uh, I even have something planned for uh, London early next year. Wow. So I might need to get in one of your classes. Well, they, well, you know, sister. Yeah, you come know, on, help wait, us wait. sister out. I'll yeah, put you, yeah, 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 I got yeah. to put you on the radio. You I'll know. put you on YouTube. Hook a sister up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that you want to say? Because there's so many people who just really admire the voiceover business, and goodness knows, I know why. It's a great business. Well, I would remind people that, uh, one, it doesn't matter what kind of voice you have. It's acting. Mm -hmm. It's connecting. Every voiceover is a conversation. Um, and if you can touch people here and here. In your head and heart. In your head and your heart. Uh, you can have a voiceover career. Uh, but get the training. Mm -hmm. Get your acting chops up. That's right. And there's so many different forms of voiceover. There's oh. promos. There's commercial voices. There's announcing. There are more forms of voiceover now. I used to think I did it all. Um, and I've done most. Oh, come to think of it, I probably have done it all. Uh, I have done narration for National Geographic, Science Channel, Discovery, uh, promos for most of the major networks at one time. I was a Hulu guy uh, That's right. for seven years uh, from beginning until just last year. Uh, I do in-show announce, 15 years, uh, image awards, but also the Billboard Music Awards, the Trumpet Awards, the American Music Awards, um, lots of different things. I, I, I have a wide range, but now one of the uh, biggest areas is audiobooks. Mm. I have done two. And I hope to not do a third, except somebody just offered me one. That That's a I, that long, I, boring it, thing to do. It, it. It's a marathon, but I, I, <laughs> I said I'm going to do it because they asked, and, and the money was good. Uh, <laughs> and it was uh, on a subject that I'm very interested in. Mm -hmm. But um, there are lots of, of places uh, you can work. You don't have to do uh, everything. Uh, you have people that specialize in medical announce. You have mm -hmm. people that specialize in e-books. The person who uh, talks really fast and says you might have diarrhea or heart attack. Mm -hmm. That that person. <laughs> <laughs> and also animation is so much fun. Oh, I boy. love animation. Animation is wonderful, mm -hmm. and you can catch me on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I play uh, Korath, and if you're looking at the movie, that was the Jaiman Hansu part. <laughs> Yeah, because you play monsters, you play... Oh, every kind And listen, and, and they're also, like, animals. I mean, we know people who have some of the most expensive meows and barks in the Aww. world. <laughs> uh, I, I did a game the other day, and uh, I played uh, some kind of wolf character. And uh, I, I, I can't tell you what it is, but I also, in the same game, I got to be Russian then. So <laughs> you, you'll never know. Well, that's what happens. You get in there, and then the, the director may say, hey, I need a uh, I need a cab driver. Can you do Absolutely. a cab? Absolutely. You know, you can hey, do... Hey, can you do a New York cab driver? Hey, come on, come on. 
Okay. Yeah, get in the cat. Okay, all right, so let's play a little word recognition here, or a little character recognition. I'm going to throw out something and give me a voice. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's a test. <laughs> it's a test. What's a good one? What's a good one? Uh, okay, so you are a uh, villain who um, has a strange tick. I, I, oh, I, 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 I'm going to... I'm going to kill you, but uh, uh, first I, I, I have to take my medication. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, on this one, you're a loving dad, but you have just lost it. You've lost your temper. Junior, come on, man. Really? That is no way to treat your sister or your mother or the dog, and especially not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now play the dog. <laughs> <laughs> His dog makes for a little cat there. All right, can you play a machine? <laughs> or that's cool. Little that alien. was cool. Oh, yeah, oh, You're right. <laughs> Anything else that you want to say? Um, you know what? Just uh, you and I have been friends for so long, and I value your friendship so much. Oh, and uh, you thank you for inviting me on. And uh, if you're somebody out there who is interested in voiceover, I encourage you uh, to do your thing and know your brand and uh, keep stepping. Keep stepping. And you can also take Dave Fenoy's classes. There you go. Yeah. Where do we find you? Uh, you can go to my website, DaveFenoy.com. Uh, you can friend me on Facebook. Follow me at uh, uh, Dave Fenoy voice actor, uh, or like me at Dave Fenoy voice actor, or follow me at Dave Fenoy. And that's F-E-N-N-O-Y. Dave Fenoy, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Lift every voice. <laughs> <laughs>